Hi, this is Matt from TracyandMatt.co.uk and if you're a follower of some of our videos either on site or on, uh, on YouTube, you'll know that some of the best things in life uh, actually do come in white boxes and this one is perhaps no exception for here we have another HTC device. This time we have, have the HTC One X. So I'm going to do a quick unboxing video for you. Uh, this is obviously a pre-release product here that we have, hence the white box. Um, it's out to us for review. Um, the full review, the full retail package would um, be a neatly and you know proper printed box rather than a white box. Um, and I suspect you have more accessories that we've got here. We'll come back to the handset in just a second though. Um, also in the box I have um, a charger. And HTC recently changed their charger design to uh, to this style here and we just have the UK p uh, 3 pin plug and a USB socket on top and then we have a here we go, USB to micro USB sync charge cable you can either use with your PC or indeed direct with that USB connector also in the bottom here a little bit more unusual for HTC in fact this is the only one I know of that has um, well has a micro sim and so we have this micro sim card removal tool kind of similar to the one that uh, Apple give you this one's got HTC laser stenciled in it so it's kind of cool and stick that in the bottom there leave that in place and move that all out of the way and take a look at the handset I'm going to just peel off this screen protector at the front here because it is actually got right, has actually got writing on it it's going to kind of get in the way uh, let's start at the front then. Uh, on the front we have the forward-facing camera, which is 1.3 megapixel uh, for kind of like video conferencing, that kind of stuff. You can use it with Skype. Uh, the grill at the top there, as you can see, perhaps just, just about make out on the video. It's a little bit difficult with the contrast. Um, it's a small grill at the top there, which is actually a loudspeaker. Uh, the display is a 4.7 inch, uh, 720 by 1280 pixels, so uh, it's an HD resolution. Uh, display very cool, very high res. Uh, in actual fact, the screen technology is super super IPS uh, LCD2 capacitive touchscreen, and uh, we do have a slight contour there that you can see on the display. Uh, it's only very very slight, but uh, it's enough just to make it a kind of a little bit more uh, interesting, exciting. We also have that curved back as well. Uh, it's uh, Gorilla Glass there, which was made by Corning. Uh, below the touch screen display we have capacitive touch buttons, so you've got back, home and uh, menu there. The search button has been dropped, um, so we don't have that anymore. Whether or not that's going to be a trend that continues across uh, HTC's handsets, well, kind of guess that remains to be seen. On the side we have a micro USB sync charge connector. On the bottom, really nothing great deal to see. There's just a tiny hole which is your loudspeaker, or actually your microphone, sorry. And then on the left, hand, the right-hand side, you have an up and down volume control um, button there, quite uh, discreet. On the top, uh, the power button, again quite discreet and being uh, white, it blends in quite nicely. There's another little tiny hole there, which is a secondary microphone, and then a three and a half mil headphone connector. Uh, what you should actually have in the retail pack will be um, a wired headset. Um, probably going to be Beats Audio type of uh, wired headset uh, which are actually really excellent um, but nevertheless that can be used with standard 3.5mm headphones or if you've got your own uh, special set of uh, headphones or wired headset uh, you can indeed use that as well uh, in terms of the back, on the back we've got the camera which is an 8 megapixel autofocus camera with an LED flash, really it's supposed to be an excellent camera um, it's capable of recording uh, HD video and taking photographs simultaneously, uh, which is a pretty cool feature. And uh, as I say, it's uh, geotagging is also supported as well. The little slot there that you can see at the top is where our micro SIM card would go, and the little hole there is where we use the tool to check the SIM card tray and actually put in the SIM card. If you are familiar with um, iPhones, when did iPads with the uh, SIM card tray, uh, you'll know what that's all about. Uh, so it's kind of following along. So the battery is non-removable, you can't take the back cover off, there's nothing actually to get to, uh, no memory card socket, but that's okay because this actually has got uh, 32 gig of internal memory, uh, up to 26 gig of that is actually available to the user, the rest is all ROM and all that kind of stuff, the operating system, but up to 26 gig available to the user, so it's not too bad at all. Back's really quite nice and, and uh, 
stylish, I guess you'd say. There's a loudspeaker at the bottom. We've got kind of a little black mark on the corner of the uh, one we've got here. It's sort of, uh, well, it seems to be roaming off reasonably well. So loudspeaker and Beats Audio on the back. The actual HTC logo is kind of stenciled in the back there, so it's sort of uh, got a texture to it. Then we have these little connectors there, uh, which means that we can actually use a dock to actually drop it into a dock to charge, sync, and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of cool as well. Uh, makes it easier to get in and out of dock. And I guess, well, the orientation means that you could use it as a clock, um, a bedside clock, alarm clock, or something like that. So that's kind of useful as well. So let's just power up. And there we go, we do have some juice, that's kind of cool. Uh, while we run down, the let me run down the specification. Uh, it's quad band for GSM and uh, quad band for HSDPA as well. And in terms of size, we've got 134.4 millimeters uh, from top to bottom, just under 70 millimeters wide. That's 69.9 millimeters. And thickness, it really is quite thin. It's 8.9 millimeters uh, across the thickest point there. Um, it does seem and feel really slim. And it feels very, very light. Um, I guess that's because partly because of the size. It means that the weight is distributed over a bigger area in the palm of the hand. Um, so it does feel quite light, but it is actually quite light anyway. It's 130 grams. So considering the size of the device and what's built in there, um, the weight is extremely impressive. Uh, the display, as I've already mentioned, 720 by 1280 pixels. It's, it's an HD resolution display. And it's Super IPS LCD2 with um, Gorilla Glass on the front. Uh, Processor-wise, well, we have a quad-core CPU running at 1.5 gigahertz. It's a Tegra 3 chipset and uh, has a GPS, uh, uh, GeForce um, GPU as well. So um, I guess for graphics and games, it should run really, really, really nicely. Um, we'll do a benchmark on that in just a moment. 8 megapixel autofocus camera on the back and a 1.3 megapixel forward-facing camera, support HD video, um, 12, 1080p on the back and 720p on the front, believe it or not, so that is really rather good. Um, accelerometer, gyro, proximity sensor, compass, all that kind of stuff built in, FM radio and uh, assisted GPS, uh, all that sort of stuff is pretty cool. Uh, we are running Android OS uh, 4.0, which is ice cream sandwich, Bluetooth 4.0 and uh, Wi-Fi supporting wireless LAN uh, 802.11, BG and N standards, uh, Wi-Fi Direct, DLNA and Wi-Fi hotspots. <sighs> I think that covers most of the bits and pieces there. Oh, I guess I should mention the memory. Uh, 12, uh, 32 gig of internal memory, of which 26 gig is available, and 1 gig of RAM. Right, so there we are. We're presented with the... Uh, HTC Sense user interface, this is being the latest version. If you've seen HTC Sense before, you're going to understand the lock ring to unlock. And we're going to go ahead and do a quick setup. So, English United Kingdom, yes. Next, we're going to set up um, sync data. We're going to connect to my Wi Fi network here, which we'll just do very quickly. Uh, before I do that, let me just uh, show you the keyboard. Uh, extremely large because we have a 4.7 inch display keyboard can afford to be quite large and it's a really nice looking keyboard it's uh, just kind of got a little bit of design to it that just makes it look kind of cool there we go and we should be just connecting and obtaining an IP address there we go and we are connected so we can progress and uh, we're going to skip the HTC account right now we'll just skip all the and connect well we'll just accept all the defaults basically Agree to using my location. Um, it asked me about a Dropbox account. We get a 25 gig Dropbox storage with this uh, phone. Um, HTC have actually been really good at providing that. Uh, I think they're doing it on other handsets as well. Uh, 25 gig account is really cool. Um, I must stop saying cool. Uh, it's really good to have a 23 gig account. Um, if you were to actually pay for that, it's well, it's not expensive, but it costs you uh, a few quid a month. Um, but I'm going to skip past that. I do have an account, but I'm not going to set it up. I can set up all these other accounts here as well at the same time. So um, this is a thing that's changed recently. You used to be able to set up Google and email and that kind of stuff in here, uh, including Facebook and Flickr. But now we can set up other things like Dropbox and Evernote um, and SkyDrive and those sorts of things. Watch accounts can all be set up at the same time. 
Um, I'm going to skip that for now. I can come back and set those up later. I'm going to skip the transfer and skip the rest of the other stuff because I want to just get into the good stuff. And here we go. We're loading up for the first time. Um, if you're worried about the length of time it's taking to load, don't be. It uh, is only the first time that it does that. Subsequently, when you turn the device on and off, it's much, much quicker. Um, I don't need to, to tell me about the quick tips just for the moment. So there we go, it started up, it's picked up, uh, well, I'll try to pick up my location, it's not too far off, but uh, I guess it hasn't got an extensive database of locations. Um, but it's telling me the weather, it's updated the time and the temperature at the top there, so again, if you've seen HTC devices before, you'll be familiar with the sort of weather and time at the top. We've got a play shop at the bottom and favourites down in the corner and we can expand the favourites. So we can go to internet, music, personalised display, car mode, HTC hub and Facebook. I'm going to kind of skip out there for a second. Swipe across, we've got the Google search with voice search and favourite people. We have a nice calendar. Again, this has been slightly updated for the latest version of HTC Sense. So you'll notice that today's date is circled in green rather than just highlighted in a particular colour blank display there and we don't wrap all the way around unlike some of the other HTC handsets we're going to come back the other way so we've got a music uh, playing app there uh, setting up a new album I think that's to do with photographs rather than music and then again another blank display I can hold down my finger on the button there and then it will show me the widgets that are available looks like there's quite a few so we've got them here and the nice thing about the widgets that we have uh, and the implementation of it on this device is that we do have previews of what they're going to look like. So we can swipe our way across. There are 25 pages of widgets um, and there are four per page so there's going to be a hundred widgets available to actually load onto the display. There are loads of them and they all look really tasty on this uh, display. One thing that I do quite like the look of is the calculator number of times that I drop into my device, be it the iPhone or indeed uh, an Android phone and go straight for the calculator. Um, so that's actually being having that having that on the home screen is kind of cool. You can see all these other bits that we've got here, it's just giving you a sort of an idea of some of the things that we can actually have as a widget. Um, we can also download other ones, we can search for them and all that kind of stuff. So that's great. Come back from here, let's go back to the middle, so we have the pinch, there we go, we have uh, pinch there, we can see the overview or um, leap view, call it what you will, but basically that's a, a view of all the things, all the widgets and everything that's sitting on our home screen, on all the different panels, touching a particular one brings it up. Then go down to the bottom and I can see all of the installed applications, so there uh, we've got quite a few, you can see Facebook and Flash Player, uh, internet, 7 Digital, Dropbox was in there too, Polaris Office, we can personalise display, we've got a settings menu and we've got various other things in there, Twitter included. Uh, one thing we'll definitely want to take a quick look at is, um, I can't see it, here we go, internet. So let's go and see what we can do from here. So we're going to go to our site. Just do it as a Google search, should have uh, typed it in rather than that, but hey, let's just see what happens. And there we go. And as you can see, page is loading really fast, rendering really quickly. I'm using a broadband connection, but uh, it just does indicate how quickly the page loads. The text is really easy to read on that high res display, so even with uh, running in portrait mode we can read the text and obviously if we rotate into landscape it's even better uh, consuming the web on this handset is going to be awesome I'd say it's a really nice screen size and uh, well I'm erring towards the uh, 4.7 now 3.7 used to be my maximum size and as time goes by I'm liking the bigger and bigger display devices and uh, I think I could actually really quite like this one so that's a, that's kind of a compliment and as I say I think over over time people get used to, including myself, get used to 
devices with bigger and bigger displays. Uh, I think on the days where we reduced everything down, we seem to have gone the other way and making it bigger, bigger once again. The other thing I want to take a quick look at is YouTube. And we'll do a quick search for my YouTube account, which is Leo D. And pick one of these. Let's pick the, I don't know, HCC Wildfire. That's a particularly popular one. That's a little bit old and a bit long in the tooth now, but a very popular video. Buffered really quickly. So it's playing. And then we can rotate to landscape. Place full screen in landscape. Who's that fool talking on there? Right, uh, so then underneath we have related comments and all that kind of stuff. Um, it is a standard implementation of the YouTube client, but it just works really, really nicely. I say that every time I do a video uh, on an Android device, but I think it's a really nice um, implementation um, of a YouTube on what, it, what other things should be like, in my opinion. Um, the other thing I want to take a quick look at is, uh, let's have a look, and I am going blind. I want to actually go into Android Market. Which is now the play account. So let me go and sign into that. There we go, that should take, uh, well hopefully it doesn't take a few minutes to sign in, but we should sign in pretty fast. And let's uh, say we change the name of uh, Android Market there, so it's now something different. So we go here, next, so we have Play Shop. I'm going to do a quick search after accepting the terms and conditions. And I'm going to search for Quadrant. And I'm going to run, or download first of all, Quadrant, the free standard edition. We've got a notification at the top. There we go. It's installing. Successfully installed. Now we can run it from here. And we'll do a quick benchmark. Running a full benchmark. And let's see just how quick that quad core 1.5 gigahertz processor is and uh, well, how quickly the uh, graphics work as well. It shouldn't take lot, too long to run through. Uh, we'll just say that uh, when we do our review we generally run through Quadrant uh, maybe about a dozen times because each time you run it you will get a slightly different uh, benchmark result. But this seems to be running really nice and smooth. Bearing in mind it's drawing quite a number, large number of pixels on the display and it's still running at around 60 frames a second. Yeah, even there we've got around 60 frames a second, 59, 58 frames a second. And there we go, we're very near the end. We'll check out our results. There we go, wow, that's really very, very impressive score. 4,500 is the benchmark. You can see how that stacks up against the Galaxy Tab, Nexus and Nexus S, for example. Um, I haven't seen a result that high before. I think about 3,000 or so is about the highest I've seen. So uh, it does show you um, what, how, how much number crunching the uh, dual-core processor is doing there. Uh, it's just indicative, though, obviously. Very, you get varying results and when we do our full review I'll run the benchmark a few times so we do get uh, an average result. But there we go, that is the HTC One X. We'll have a full review for you over the next couple of weeks. Uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter you can do, it's twitter.com slash Tracy and Matt or facebook.com slash Tracy and Matt I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on Tracy and Matt but for now, thanks for watching.